So this is the guy that we're trying to attract here. And we have to nurture him with the right programs. We have to connect him with smart people like you, that your accountants and your lawyers and your professional executives and you know IP and you know all this stuff. This is very important. It's more than just your money. We need that, but there's more that we need, right? Because we have to connect them at the right time with the right people just to keep going down this circle. And then we grow them, right? Then we grow them, and what does that mean? Well, one of the things we have to do is help them be better, better selves, right? He's never managed people, he's a young guy. So some person has a meltdown in his staff meeting, what does he do? It's like freaking out. Like, you, you know, feedback. You just don't freak out with them, don't get mad. People are crazy, we all are, right? It's a human condition thing, it's not just your employees, we all are. And so this is part of what we're helping him do. And then we really need to invest in it. But not all of them are going to get investment. We understand that. Right? We understand that. And I tell these guys, you have to talk to lots of people often. You're not going to just talk to one group about raising money. I've had term sheets pulled the night before the deal and couldn't make payroll. That wasn't a fun day for me. But that happens all the time. I'm not unique in that way. And I didn't take it personally. I mean, after I cried. Right. Right. <laughs> take, don't take it personally. But I want you to know that four centrifuges and four startup sensing entrepreneurs are in our DNA. All this big company stuff, yay, thank you for funding us, yay. What they want is for Tim and Wendy to do the work to attract entrepreneurs that are high quality. Here. And that's what we're doing. Now, we have, guys, I want you to, if we could have a test on this, it would be awesome. I want you to memorize that these, this is what is required to have a startup community. And we have a unique one. Our assets are better than Boulder's. And I'm going to compare us to Boulder, not to Silicon Valley, because it's unusual. Right? And notice I'm not there. I'm here for a reason. Because you have special assets. Now, this startup community, here's what it takes. First of all, a revitalized <laughs> urban scene. Do you think we have one? I think so. Thank you, Steve Lieber, one of the most amazing leader, uh, leaders in this town. I've been starting most mornings and ending most days with him because he's trying to finish our building. This is an impressive guy. He knew what to do to get that place redone, and he had a lot of good sponsorship from big companies. Thank you for doing that. I think back in the D day, it was AG that even set up some of that. 3CDC, Rock Hall, we had to have it, we had it. We need accelerators. Do you know we have nine? Now, I'm a big fan of the brandery. Everyone knows that. I'm a complete bigot towards their success because I've watched them from day one. There are nine other. Ocean just started. They're rocking. I'm really excited about Ocean. But there are others. There's Uptech, right? There are plenty of accelerators. We need more. Tim and I want more, not less. Now, we want the ones we have to be successful, you betcha, but we want more. We want co-working space, we're gonna have that. I think it's 35,000 square feet or something that we're gonna be in, along with Sensitech and the Brandery in the summertime, if Steve and I don't kill each other first, right? We'll open the building then. <coughs> then, um, access to angel capital. Again, number two or number three in the US, what your ratings are, they're impressive, right? This is, this is really good work you're doing. You should be proud of that. We need more. We need more and we don't have enough. We've got problems with angel capital. We do not have enough, honestly. We need more deals, too. Tim and I are trying to get those, but we need more angel capital. We have to have our universities involved. NKU, Xavier, Miami, UC, great, but those efforts need to be accelerated and leveraged more, right? I go out and speak a lot, so does the team we have. But we still we need to commercialize some of the science out of, the, out of those universities. We just need them to organize and move that thing forward. And we're, we're working on that. And then we need the help of corporations. Guys, these things we have. Check, 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 check. So no money now about, well, we don't have it going on here. We do. We have a lot of work to do to leverage these assets. But Mark Suster, who is and a VC firm, high profile VC firm that we have invested in, the fund of funds, Tim and his team. This is what he says, and he's one of the highest quality VCs in the US. <coughs> Young entrepreneurs love him. This is what he said, and I'm telling you, we have these things. So we should not, we should be happy. 
right? We should ring this bell. There's a lot that we have. Now, I want to compare centrifuges to other organizations similar to it in Boulder in particular. Because it's, this is what got me here. Dave Knox, Tim, J.B. Croft, and Bob McDonald. Those are the guys that got me. They recruited me. And here's what I heard from them. These are my words, not there. I heard first, strategic long bet. Two, the building, $16 million and over the Rhine, and a fund of funds, $58 million, under management now, Tim and his team have invested, I think we're about to make our 10th investment in outside DC firms. This is huge. Why? We want first financial return for our limited partners who are the big companies that you saw earlier, and then what? Engagement here. We want them to come here. We can't make them invest in the deals you see. We can't make them, but we can expose them to our crown jewels, which are our universities, our hospitals, our entrepreneurs, folks like you, high quality, smart. When Tim brings them here, we show off the place, right? And that's important. Those are the long bets, too. <coughs> Bowler did not have that. They didn't even have any big companies there. Bowler is anti-growth. They're not anti-startup, but they're anti-growth. So there was nothing like that they could pull off there. There was no organization of the business leaders to do a fund of funds. They're like, what? Brad Bell and David Cohen kind of on his own there because he's a high net worth guy that's quirky and he's a good investor and David's the same. And now they have tech stars around the world. By the way, that was less than 10 years ago. So it's really interesting we have some advantages. Centrifuge was meant to be uh, a big tent, not, not like, okay, we own it all, because we do not. We would not be successful without Queen City, without the brandery, without lots of other things, without Cincy Tech. But we're supposed to be looking at the care and feeding of all startups, right? Not just Conrad, but <coughs> all of them. And that, that big tent is a big responsibility, right? It takes a lot of collaboration to do that. And I will say, because you're my colleagues now, my friends, that I think our city needs to be less insular and competitive about each piece of your dirt you want. Well, we do this and you can't do it. Like what? That's not how you grow things, right? So that collaboration, meaning all the piece parts have to come together, is what we are trying to lead and foster at Centrifuge. That's just what we lead and foster. We can't make that happen, but we're do doing our best to lead it. Now, access to pillar companies, we have over 120, what we affectionately call big co's in the region. Why is that important? Our Conrads and other Conrads need to do what? They need to get feedback on their products and services, right? They need customers that actually will pay. <coughs> we have a job to identify and curate and present entrepreneurs and their companies to these big companies. Yesterday, I, my days are wrong, Tim's days are wrong, just like yours. Um, yesterday, three meetings in a row, I was at Standard Textile to talk about marketing capability that they need. Awesome business, rocking. I wanted, they need some new marketing tools, technologies, right? We talked to the VP of marketing there about it. Then we went to Sunny D. Right, and they're doing some very interesting work, and they also are looking for some ad tech technology, you know, something that helps them find customers in the store in a low engagement way. So they're very specific with their requirements. That's the kind of work we do. So we're calling on Bitcos. I'm representing startups. I'm not there to be their personal consultant. There's no time for that. But I'm there to translate their future plans into some technology that maybe we have. Right? And you'll hear more about that. We are maximalists, and that's not jargon, kind of goofy Silicon Valley language. What a maximalist does, I'll give you an example. When a maximalist operates, they decide that we're going to have a building and we're going to rent it, and then we're going to make sure around the building are all the other products and services that people in the building need. The fund of funds is another example of being a maximalist. We could have raised a fund, I guess, to do direct investments. In fact, we get criticized a lot. Well, oh, you don't make direct investments. Okay. 
What we decided to do strategically, not me, Tim, Bob, and Jeff Weedman, who's the founder of this thing, they decided, look, budget funds makes more sense. It does take money outside the region, but it's bringing it back. In fact, the economic multiplier right now is four to one. One dollar out, four dollar in. We like that. For those of you that like math, that's good math. It needs to be eight to one, frankly. That's the objective we have. But watch that space because that will matter to us over time. None of this is a quick fix. We're not talking, you know, like a big whatever. It's gonna take some time to do. Now, being a perpetual program, the brandery accelerators have beginnings and ends. They open up for their application, they go through a, a sprint of a six to nine months, and then they close down, right? Now, that's not bad. I think it, could, it accelerates a lot of innovation you know, high level and very specific companies, we're always on. So we're doing our best to attract, right? Educate, nurture, have funding, connections, all the time. So we don't have a beginning and an end. Ours is perpetual. And this is something that we here in Startup Sensei, it's very unique. We should be proud of that. Tell others how proud you are. Okay, now what? Tim and I and a bunch of us decided to do. When I first got here, I spent the first 30 days explaining how we're different from Sensei Tech and Brandy. And I just got bored with it. Because it all comes together to mean something very important. It wasn't about the Brandy, Sensei Tech, Queen City Angels, and Centerpiece. That wasn't the point. This is the point. So what we are leading, all of us, including Tony and everyone else, we're leading something called Startup Sensei. We're all in this. And this is, you know, it's a hashtag thing because I'm a social media goofball and I like digital things. And so I kind of created this. Actually, it existed before, right? And I just took it and started playing with it. And now we have it in, in space. And we're building a brand around it. And this is what Startup Sensei means to us. Now, this is a summary slide because I know you've been paying attention. And so this is all the things that exist in Startup Sensei that we should take pride in. And we should look at ways to accelerate and connect all these pieces. They will work better when the interdependency of the parts are there instead of everyone having their little piece. Okay, now, what about the deals? I know you're in deal flow. I've heard about your deal flow. I know you have very serious systems and processes and due diligence, and thank you for doing that because I think that's a requirement for us. But overall, the first thing Tim and Sarah and the team and I did is I was, I was getting a headache over just hearing the same startups over and over. I said, there's got to be more than that. Like, where are they? And so we did an inventory. And we did a segmentation exercise. And a good friend of ours from P&G, uh, Joan Lewis, came and helped us because she's smart like that. And others helped us out. And we just spread all the assets we had on the board. You'll see it in a minute. And here's the, here's the net. And by this changes every day. We have now 160 some odd members in centrifuges, right? You don't have to have money to be a member, meaning you don't have to have raised capital yet, right? You can be a member as you're coming up with an idea. And I think it's, what is it, Tim, 120 a year or something. It's kind of not much money, but it's something to help us kind of pay the rent a little bit. Um, but those are, those are members. I, yeah, I think we're up to 160. We have another 12 or 15 coming tonight. There are 107 more out in the ecosystem that are inside your portfolio or inside brand, uh, the Brandery or Cincy Tech. They're, for whatever reason, having a joint centerpiece. I don't get upset about it. I just want to know who they are so I can help them out. Right? That's all I want to do. Because if they need money, Tim and I need to help them find money. If they don't know how to raise money, we can help them to the degree we can you know, have programs to do that. So in our ge geography, we're thinking somewhere around 300, and this goes up every day. Yeah, I like that. Now this is a story I'm going to tell my friend Bob McDonald this afternoon. He's going to be really excited, right? Even though he's got other things he worries about, like the VA, this is going to be exciting for him. Tommy Williams loves this story. The guys who funded us love this story, right? Now, you're saying, but Wendy, they're not that high quality. They're, all, they're not all going to make it. We're not going to, okay, all right. Right, that's, you know, that's, that's going to be fine. Right, one in ten is good enough. We just got to have a lot of assurances to get out, right? And, and a lot of apologies that are raising money and a lot of everything but the house.